Good morning, everybody. How are you today? Uh, my name is Ian, and I'm the owner of Right Start Newcomer Services. And today we're going to have a great English lesson all about idioms. So uh, it's going to be interesting, and this is for CLB level five and six. So uh, here we go, and we've got a great show. Thank you for watching. If you're watching the replay, thank you very much. And we have a special guest today. So uh, my friend Trevor is going to join us. He's a great English teacher, and he's going to share his knowledge. And we're going to try to help you understand idioms together. OK, so uh, like I said, today is all about idioms. And let's move on. So if you're watching, please comment. Uh, you can comment in the comment section, ask a question, um, you know, answer questions, talk to each other. Uh, it's all good. And if you're watching the recording afterwards on YouTube or Facebook, comment then, ask questions, then I will follow up and get back to you on your questions. OK, so moving ahead. Today, we're going to learn a lot. Uh, we're going to learn what are idioms. So uh, idioms, we'll, we'll talk about it, but idioms are expressions that are used a lot in English. Um, we'll learn why are idioms important. Uh, we're also going to talk about how to best learn idioms. And then we're going to learn 20, count them, 20 idioms for life in Canada. Okay. So here we go. What is an idiom? So if you're watching, comment in the comment section. What do you think an idiom is? Uh, maybe you've learned it in school. Maybe you've come across them in your day-to-day -day lives. But what is an idiom? So here's the definition. An idiom is an expression that has a meaning that is different from the meaning of the words used. So I can give you an example. Um, very common example is raining cats and dogs. So raining cats and dogs. The meaning is it's raining hard. There's a lot of rain. But based on the words of the idiom, it's raining cats and dogs. It's not really raining cats and dogs. So the meaning, it's raining hard, is different from actually cats and dogs falling from the sky. So that's an idiom. An idiom is an, just an expression that has a special meaning. OK. Why, why do we learn idioms? Why do we care? And why are idioms important to learn? So number one, they are used a lot. So in conversation especially, we use idioms to get our point across. And you cannot go a day in Canada without hearing people use idioms. So they're used a lot. In order to understand what people are talking about, you need to know what an idiom is. And you need to know the exact meaning of that idiom. Okay? Uh, they help you to understand people, especially in conversation. So like I said, idioms are usually spoken, although they can be written as well. Uh, they can help you express yourself. So often it's easier to say something with an idiom because it captures our exact meaning. Then try to, you know, say a lot of things that don't exactly say what we want to say. So they can help you express yourself. They're often used across languages. So idioms can help you learn English because maybe you have similar expressions in your own language whether it's Arabic, Chinese, Japanese, French, Italian. I think all languages have idioms, and some of them go across languages. Okay, And finally, they can make you sound more fluent. They can make you sound better at English than maybe you actually are. So if somebody hears you use idioms, they think, oh, wow, this person's English is great. So you can kind of fool people to think that you have better English than you might actually have. OK, so those are the reasons I came up with. Um, also, they're fun. I think idioms are fun. They're funny. Um, so it, it's a really good thing for us to learn. The next question is how. How can we better learn idioms? Um, so my first tip is to get lots of exposure. So listen a lot. 
uh, even read a lot, watch things like TV shows. TV shows are great for idioms because they use them all the time. Uh, you can also turn on the subtitles if you're watching a TV show to better catch the idioms. Um, also learn how to identify them. So if you hear something that sounds a little funny, write it down, right? Write down the idiom that you hear and then go later and look it up. So you can look it up online. You can get a dictionary of idioms. There's lots of places where you can look up idioms these days. Uh, next one is to guess the meaning by context. So listen to the full conversation or read the whole sentence and the whole paragraph and try and guess what you think that that means. Maybe you're wrong, maybe you're right, but just thinking about it helps to implant the idiom into your mind. So try to guess the meaning first and then you can go check and see whether you're right or not. Uh, the next one is to learn the whole idiom. So don't just learn one part of the idiom like a word. You need to understand and be able to use the whole thing. So learn the whole phrase instead of each individual word. Because when your mind is trying to recall it, you'll be able to recall the whole idiom better. Next one is to use pictures. Uh, pictures can often help us remember things. So if you can connect an idiom to a picture or even a story. Uh, make a story about the idiom. Uh, for example, there's one that's, uh, that goes, cat's got your tongue. Uh, so if you can think of a picture of a cat, if you can make a story about a cat that has somebody's tongue, um, the idiom is cat's got your tongue. The meaning is that you can't talk. So you're having trouble speaking because maybe you, you're trying to say something difficult. Uh, and the expression is cat's got your tongue. So think of a picture of a cat, think of a cat you know, make a story about a cat, and that will help your mind remember it because we learn best by remembering stories. Okay, next one, build up your knowledge of idioms slowly. So don't get an idiom book and try to memorize 200 idioms at once because they're going to get mixed up in your mind. So go slowly, learn a new idiom each day or two per day or three per day. Uh, don't try to learn 10, 20, 30 idioms all at once. So take it slow, bit by bit, you will build on your knowledge. Um, one thing you can do is use flashcards. So flashcards are little pieces of paper you can write the idiom on one side, you can draw a picture, and then every so often, maybe every day you go through your flip cards and try to remember all the idioms that you're, that you're trying to remember. Okay, and the next one is to practice. So we don't really learn something until we're able to use it. So learn an idiom, first is hearing and understanding, and then is practicing. So, practice using it in conversations. Uh, maybe you use it wrong a few times, but hopefully the people that you're with will correct you and say, oh, no, we, we don't really use it that way. We use it this way. So that's the best way to learn is to actually practice using those idioms. Okay, great. So now I have 20 idioms for life in Canada. And I'm gonna wait for my friend Trevor because he's supposed to help with this part. So uh, Trevor, if you're watching, get your butt out of bed. Uh, let's do it, man. Here, I'm gonna send him a quick email. Oh, there he is. I knew he'd be here. Get your butt out of bed. Hey, top of the morning. Let's do it, man. Hey buddy, how are you? Not too bad, Ian. You, you're looking long time no see. Listen, you're looking. I knew he'd be here. You're looking a little bit long in the tooth there. I haven't seen you for a while. Long in the tooth. What do you mean by that? Well, it's been some time, and it looks like you've aged a little bit. Aged forever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it could be the lighting. I'm not sure. I know that you're working on the new studio. It but could be. Anyway, it could be the, the shoe fits right. If the shoe fits. So uh, I want to welcome my friend Trevor Squires. He is a, an expert English teacher. 
He's been teaching, I think, longer than me even. Uh, and he's taught all over the world. So how many countries have you taught in, Trevor? I think we're going on country number 10, Mr. Shepard. So I've, I've been around the block. I started out in Japan, flipped over to Korea, and did China and Russia, Vietnam, over to the Middle East, Saudi Arabia, up northern Africa, Tunisia, down south to Costa Rica, and then COVID came. COVID so happened. I'm helping the folk, the kind folks here looking to learn a little bit of English Canada side. And uh, yeah, so I thought nice. I'd pop in and say hi. Nice. Well, thank you for joining us, Trev. Uh, More than welcome. Do you have any suggestions on helping English learners learn idioms? So what would you suggest would be the best ways to learn? Well, a lot of times when I'm teaching upper level classes, they can be, you know, CLB 8, 9, 10. Um, we, I get the request a lot, you know, teacher, please, you know, help us to learn idioms because in fact they're an integral part of the language as you know mm -hmm. and just exposing yourself to pop culture I think is a really good way to do that um, short of reading them in a book that can be kind of monotonous a little bit boring uh, and you know it, it, there are so many of them that you might not see the practicality of using them on a daily basis but I would say stick to a couple listen to you know pop culture whether it be songs movies, TV, people at the, the grocery store when you're around and see if you can actually pick up on some of the expressions that we're going to look at today and give yourself an opportunity because if you don't speak it and hear yourself using it, then it's easy to forget it. So put yourself in a situation where you can give yourself ample practice and exposure if, if possible. Yeah. But I don't awesome. think there's one golden technique. It's just really getting in and into the trenches in everyday life and learning how people talk in, natural, okay. in a natural setting, I should say. Yeah, you made me think of something. Um, it's okay to ask somebody. So if you hear them say an expression you don't understand, why not say, what does that mean? Or yeah, what do you mean I don't that? understand that, what you said, and have them explain the idiom to you. So everybody in the world can be your teacher. You don't need a teacher to be your teacher. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so here we're going to move on. We're going to learn 20 idioms for your life in Canada. So Trev and I are going off to the side. Uh, as we're going, please ask questions in the comment section. You can suggest your own idioms. So if you know idioms, uh, maybe you don't know the meaning, you can put it in the chat box and Trevor and I will be able to explain those for you. So we're going to go one by one through some idioms. And we're going to first read them. Um, maybe we're going to use them in a sentence or in a short little conversation. Then uh, hopefully you know the meaning already. If not, we're going to explain the meaning of those idioms for you. So here we go. Trev, do you want to do this one? Hmm, I am kind of hungry. I didn't eat breakfast. But you know what? Speaking with you, Ian, and this whole online thing, now that I've been doing it for a long time and I'm really comfortable with it, mm -hmm. to be honest, I think it's a piece of cake. What do you think? Do you yeah, find it easy? I, um, I'm just getting used to it, so it's not really a piece of cake for me. Okay. But, uh, you know, for me, playing video games is a piece of cake because I have done it all my life. For me, I think it's the whole cake. So I can't use that expression there because I'm a really big video game fan. But uh, piece of cake, buddy. You put a game in front of me, no problem. I'm going to whiz right through it and finish it for sure. Nice. Okay. So, Trev, what does a piece of cake mean? Piece of cake is something that is easy to do, a simple task to accomplish. Right. So... Maybe you can say my job is a piece of cake or this project I'm working on is a piece of cake. Or if you have, if somebody asks you to do something and you don't think it's going to be a problem for you, is that okay? Good response, good natural response instead of yes, I can do it is sure, no problem, piece of cake. And the more natural you're sounding, you'll feel a little bit more comfortable. Yeah. Awesome. Good. So idiom number one, piece of cake. Piece of or cake, just yeah. piece of cake. We piece don't really say cake. a piece of cake, a piece of cake. That's right. Sounds like, kind of, of like pizza cake. 
<laughs> a little bit, right? Yeah. Okay, here's another food idiom. So this one is to have a lot on one's plate. So Trev, man, sorry, I don't think I can come to your party tomorrow. I have, I really have a lot on my plate. So you're eating a lot? You're, you, I, I noticed that you're, you're not that big of a gentleman. So you, clearly you must have gained more of an appetite now because of COVID or? <laughs> uh, maybe this has a special meaning. Maybe it doesn't really mean I, I eat too much. Okay. So, a lot. Oh, so you have a lot on your plate. Yeah. Maybe you have a lot of things to consider or a lot, a lot to do. I do have a lot to do. So I have a business to run. I have tutoring to do. I have these live streams. So I do have a lot on my plate. I am busy. And but you're busy. On the other the hand. I was going to say, sorry, you're busy with the, the droning. I noticed that you're capturing some beautiful landscapes of uh, you and your wonderful wife of, of Nova Scotia. And it's quite something. Yeah. Thank you. I'm you have glad. a lot on your plate. You have, a lot, you, you have a lot on your plate these days, Trevor. Not a lot on my plate. No, I'm doing a little bit of teaching on the side. And I'm just getting ready for when the world kind of opens up again. Um, so, no, I, I find it, you know, life is kind of a, a piece of cake for me right now. Not to put two into one, but yeah, it's a piece of cake. I... Uh, that being said, obviously, life for all of us is a little bit worrisome with COVID and making sure we keep safe and following the procedures and the protocol that the government advises. Mm -hmm. But uh, other than that, not a lot of my plate, just kind of biding my time and waiting biding for the time. next. Don't over idiom us, Trev. I know. Sorry about that. You know me. I'm a, I'm a teacher, so I try and push them down your throat, give you as much exposure as I can. Yeah. Okay, so idiom number three, also a food idiom. So Trev, do you want to use this one? Butter someone up. Mm, well, I know that you've been looking to get that new uh, drone that has all the, the latest bells and whistles, but I'm not so sure that your wife is on the same page. You might want to butter her up with... Uh, some nice comments so it, it, maybe you can make that a smoother transaction and an easier sell for you to get the toy that you're looking for. Maybe give her give her some nice words, show her some complimentary uh, behavior, right? Yeah. Okay, that's a good idea. I will do that after the live stream. Can so, you give me a sentence maybe, uh, Mr. Shepherd? Um, I... I really needed a raise in my job, so I decided to take my boss a coffee to butter her up. To butter her up. Mm -hmm. To make a better situation for yourself by giving her the praise, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So doing something nice for somebody, saying something nice to them will butter them up, meaning you are more likely to get what you want from that. And is, do you think that's an interesting question? Do you think that we butter up because we always have something that we want to get from the situation? Or do we just do it because we're nice? Um, I wouldn't say that that's buttering somebody up if you just say something nice or do something nice to somebody. I think there's usually a, an a reason for doing it because you want something out of that situation. Okay. What do I you get think? Through. Okay. Well, fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, so that was idiom number three. Are we still on the... Oh, we got one more food idiom. Oh, well, bringing home the bacon. I, uh, I'm i not a big fan of bacon, but you know what? When I was in the Middle East, they had some pretty lucrative uh, money contracts, and I was really able to bring home the bacon during that stage of my career. Um, the salaries were quite good. Mm -hmm. So, bring home the bacon means make money. Get some right? cash. Make a lot of money. Dollars. Make dollars, yes. So, bring home the bacon, you work hard, you bring home the money. Easy one, right? I know not everybody likes bacon or can I was just going to say, I don't know for our, our Muslim contingents, if, if they have maybe a non-haram version, if they like bring home the... 
the tofu I, i'm not sure the tofu. yeah it's a uh, vegetarian friendly um, there you go <laughs> yeah but yeah, yeah you don't there, have to eat bacon to use the expression i don't think so no probably it's still not. worth knowing i think probably not okay so that was number four i think we're moving on from the food idioms to a clothing idiom Oh, oh, we have a shirt on. Again. We're going so fast here. I can't keep up with you. Holy mackerel. Well, we'll review them at the end. Oh, so, okay. my friend Feroz is here. Hi, Feroz. You're happy to be here this morning. Thank you for joining. Bring home the beef. Big home the beef. Bring home the beef. I think uh, Mr. Khan probably wanted to reference bringing, bringing home, B R I N G. Mm -hmm. Bring home the beef. That'll work. Home. We get it. If you're yeah. bringing home some kind of meat or something delicious, you yeah. can bring home the pie, maybe, if you want. You right. can make your own idioms, but nobody will understand <laughs> what you're talking about. So. That's right. I'm bringing home good. the French fries. Yeah. Right? That's fantastic. <laughs> and the bacon. Oh, he's got the money, yeah. too. Okay. And Faroe says, maybe. Uh, <laughs> so bring home the beef. Oh, that's the halal version. Instead that's of bringing home the bacon, so <laughs> beef is chicken. fine as long as it's halal beef. Bring home the halal beef. You just made a new expression for us. Uh, thank you. Okay, but keep your shirt on for us. We'll have lots more to discover for sure. Keep your shirt on. So uh, maybe I'll, I'll try this one. Um, maybe Trev, you're you're agitated. You really want to to get going. Maybe you have something to do. So act agitated. Hey, all right, let's go. Come on. Whoa, Thank whoa, you. Trevor, Trevor, calm down. Keep your shirt on. We will get to it in a second. Okay. So what do we think this means, to keep your shirt on? Trev, do you want to handle this one? Well, I could keep my shirt on, I suppose. Yeah, keeping your shirt on really means to keep patient, to hold up, to hold on a minute. I know keep your shirt on, another one that we hear, uh, I don't know if it's just Eastern Canada or if it's North American Why, but hold your horses is sometimes one that you hear as well. That's just coming to, up later. Don't oh, uh, is that one? We jumped the gun? Okay, there you go. So keep your shirt on. Just to mean, just to mean to remain calm and to let things kind of play out and and relax. Take a deep breath, right? Yep. Exactly. Awesome. So that was, I think, number five. We're on to number six. Uh, here's another clothing idiom. So, if the shoe fits. Uh, so. Um, how can we use this one? Perhaps? I used that when I came in. I don't know if you noticed my segue when you you were introducing me into the, the show and I was using a couple of idioms saying that you looked a little bit long in the tooth and hey. Yeah, that's the one that stuck in my mind when you called me an old man. An old man. You know what? And I said, well, Ian, if you look old, you must be old if the shoe fits, right? Ah. Mm. So if the shoe fits, if I look old... I must be old, right? So, Sorry. not he saying, used that to was all just for the show. He, Ian actually looks quite good for his age. I don't know how we won't say how old he is here, but uh, I'm 24. I would have given you at least uh, 48, 49. <laughs> uh, so, if the shoe fits means if the description holds true, uh, then it, it's probably true, right? So. You know, if I if I look old, I'm probably old, and the shoe fits. Uh, there is a longer expression, I think, right, Trev? So, if the shoe fits, wear it. I think is the full expression. Yeah, the, you're right, Ian. Um, but I think us being lazy as native speakers of English, we usually just let it go right after the if the shoe fits. Yeah, yeah. You'll notice that sometimes there is a full version of an idiom, and there's a shorter version that yeah. most people use. Uh, for example, the grass is always greener on the other side uh, means somebody always has something better than we have or some situation will be better than the situation we're in. 
but often we shorten it and we just say the grass is always greener or even grass is greener yeah the grass is greener hey and grass is greener yeah awesome for sure okay let's move on anybody still with us i see we have six viewers we're getting awesome. up there say hi Maybe just say, Don't good be morning. Shy. how are you? Say hi to Trevor. Any questions, uh, feel free. Yeah, any, any questions, feel free. And even any expressions or something that you heard that might not even fit exactly your definition or personal definition of an idiom, but maybe even some local jargon that you hear in the area. And you're like, I wonder what they mean by that. Maybe you hear it at a shop or from people speaking, waiting at the bus stop, and you've often wondered, but maybe you've been too shy or too embarrassed to ask. Now's your Absolutely. chance. Absolutely. We are your free English teachers today. Make it better. Together, we probably have how many years of experience? Well, I've got near 20, and you're close. We've almost got a half a century. Yeah. So if you're going to ask questions, you might as well ask us. It's not going to cost you anything. Uh, but Abdullah says hi. Do you know Abdullah Trev? Uh, I, I've met my fair share of Abdullahs in life. This Abdullah does not look familiar, although he looks very nice in his shirt. Yeah, I, I think he, I don't know if he's still an Isan's client, but that's where I met him. Um, okay, yeah, I was there for a little back. while. Great, and we also have uh, Sadia. Sadia is also an English teacher. So her expression, when it rains, it pours <laughs> appropriate for our forecast. For oh, Sadia, did you need to do that, my dear? Yes, unfortunately, we have a terrible looking forecast. And you're right, it's not getting any better. So we can use that in both ways, literal and figurative. Yeah. It, the rain is actually going to rain. And when it gets bad, the situation gets worse, right? Yeah, when it rains, it pours. exactly. So great expression, Sadia, when it rains, it pours. When something happens, many other things happen, sort of, uh, usually in a bad way, right, Trev? Uh, One bad thing after the next type of thing, kind of when you're in a bad string of luck. Mm -hmm. Maybe you lost your money for the bus, and then the bus goes by and gets water on you, and then you trip on the curb when you're walking away, and... Yeah. Just things kind of continue, and you're in a bad state. Mm -hmm. uh, one bad thing after the other. I have heard it used for good things, right? So maybe some money starts to come in. When it rains, it pours. Maybe more and more money comes in. So I have used it in a positive way as well. But usually I think it is negative. Well, we get so much rain, I think, in the East Coast that I think automatically when we hear rain, Oh, yeah. You put up the horse blind. It's like, oh, the rain. It's bad. <laughs> it's funny, actually, just as a quick side note, when I was teaching in Saudi Arabia, I remember it was my first week at the college. And, you know, Saudi Arabia, beautiful, blue, sunny skies, 40 degrees every day. Mm -hmm. The week that I was there, it, it was a torrential. It was raining cats and dogs and, uh, you know, very heavy rain. And I was thinking, oh, you know, weather's not so good. And the students were saying, oh, teacher, the weather is fabulous. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't, I, and I thought, why would they think rain is beautiful? And then, right, grass is greener type of thing or different uh, perspective. If they never get rain and they get rain, they think. So same here. We get some sun. We love it because often we see the rain. Right. right? Yeah. Exactly. So weather is cultural, I guess. Exactly. Okay. Thank you, Sadia. Thank you for sharing your expression. When it rains, it pours. That's a great one. And we have one more expression before we get back to the presentation. Together, we are stronger. So Chris Chris says, together, we are stronger. Would you say that's an idiom, Trevor? It could be. Um, I think it's a message, mm -hmm. really. I wouldn't necessarily use it as an idiom. But because uh, there's no real special meaning, it it means what it says it means. That's right. right. Literally, we are stronger. There's no special meaning like in an idiom. So it's a great expression. We use it for sure, but I don't know if I would call that one an idiom, Chris. But thank you for sharing. And uh, you're right. Together, we are stronger. <laughs> Abdullah is insulted. We insulted Abdullah says why I'm not familiar. I'm a famous man, sir. 
is you that the ab- no okay yeah maybe i'm missing something maybe we'll have to get him on the next live session yeah uh abdullah you have to join us live sometime and uh you'll introduce yourself to the world through our live stream uh but thanks for coming <laughs> abdullah is one of our biggest fan he's always on the live streams uh and he loves learning english with us pleasure and we love to have you abdullah. yeah okay let's get back to our presentation we don't want to take all of your beautiful cloudy I was going to say we we woke up to a beautiful day. Yeah. Okay, so back on track. Once in a blue moon. So um Trev, maybe you can use this one in a sentence for us. Well, you know, I uh, it's once in a blue moon I try to get to the gym, but to be honest with you because of COVID and my busy schedule and just my general laziness, I don't go that often. It's just once in a blue moon. Okay. So I think that was pretty clear. What does it mean, Trevor? Once in a blue moon? Almost never. Very rarely. Maybe if we put it on a scale of zero to 100%, mm-hmm. zero being never, 100% being always, maybe 2%, 2 or 3%, once in a blue moon. You know, yep. Maybe one time only. So Trevor goes to the gym once a month or twice a month or something like that. Something very small, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Let's move on. Trevor ruined this one for us. Um, So there are a lot of animal idioms. So horses, cats, dogs. uh, We like to use animals to, to express ourselves. So this one is hold your horses. Very, very similar to a previous one, keep your shirt on. If you remember what keep your shirt on means, it means be calm and wait. Hold your horses. Hold your horses is pretty much the same thing. So hold on, hold your horses. I will help you in a second. So to remember this one, think of horses. You can practice riding your horse like Trevor's doing. Maybe that would be good, Trevor. You can act out the rest of these idioms. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying because I only go to the gym once in a blue moon that I have to act like a horse? I'm holding my horses? It's good exercise for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Cue the music, DJ. I oh, know. there's Gracie, yeah. God lover. Yeah, so uh, I thought I would incorporate my cat into the presentation. Uh, I found a picture of her in a bag. So to let the cat out of the bag is an idiom. Um, so uh, maybe I'll, I'll try to make think of an example. Um, so uh, Trev, uh, why did you tell everybody my secret? You really let the cat out of the bag. People need to know the truth. People need to know the truth. Yes, so to let the cat out of the bag is to tell a secret or tell something that people didn't already know. Does that make sense? It does to me. Yeah, it does to you. Okay, good. Isn't she a beauty, Trev? I know you're you're infatuated with my cat. You always comment on her Facebook photos. Is there any message you'd like me to give Gracie? Uh, long live and prosper, my furry little friend. Okay. Um, to be honest with you, Ian, the jokes that I make about your cat are not your cat specific. I love animals, okay. love them to death. However, the one animal that gives me nightmares, not I'm scared of them, physical problems like uh, severe sneezing, itchy, watery eyes are cats. I'm deathly allergic to them. Okay. So anytime I see the cats, I always like have this kind of, oh my, get uh-huh. stay far away from me. But I, I do like cats, actually. Okay. And uh, yours I, is I wasn't problem. aware of your, your allergy problem. No, it's funny. No, I me. never mentioned that to you. Yeah. Um, we do have another comment by Abdullah. What about a bluebird? So is that an expression, Trev, something about a bluebird? I keep thinking of a song. That was the first thing that came into my head. Mm-hmm. But 
maybe there's an expression, Mr. Shepard, that I'm familiar with, a little bird told me, which yeah. means you're not telling, but you've found out some information about a secret. For example, maybe I found out that, um, you know, we have a coworker that's going to be having a baby. Mm -hmm. And then I approach the coworker and I say, a little bird told me that you're expecting a child. Meaning I heard it from somebody, but I'm not at liberty or I don't know, or I, I can't tell you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That would be one that I know with a bird. Yeah. Um, you know, that's definitely one I thought of like Blue Jays. So we have a Blue Jay baseball team in Canada, the Toronto Blue Jays. Um, yeah, we do have a few expressions with birds, but I can't think of one specifically about bluebirds. Um, okay, blue birds. Maybe in Arabic. Possibly in Arabic, there is it an expression could be. about bluebirds. Could be. And maybe there's a similar, you know, English expression. But maybe we use a different animal. Maybe it's just a, a slightly different expression in English. That's but thank you for sharing, Abdullah. Yeah, that's what I've noticed. Great. Okay, let's move on. We don't have too much time left. So this is a good one. Uh, a lot of idioms are about objects. So this one's sort of about a book or a page of a book. So, um, Trav, do you want to give an example for this one? I think a good example would be if, if I used a sentence. Okay, so last night we talked about me coming on here and we wanted to make sure that we were on the same page, meaning that we both understood exactly what was expected and what we needed to do, that we were both in agreement, that we were thinking along the same lines, we're on the same page. Exactly, perfect explanation. So we're on the same page, we agree, we know what's going on, and we agree that this thing is going to happen. So, awesome. This is a good one. Uh, so a bush is like a small tree. So let's give an example. Um, Trevor, why don't you just tell me what you wanna tell me? Stop beating around the bush. Okay, I'm pregnant. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the baby's coming in two months can't you see yeah. um it's funny beating around the bush and i notice in england they see beat beat about the bush beat about the bush around okay. yeah so idioms yeah. are different based on the country so maybe Absolutely. there are similar idioms in english in different countries but maybe slightly different um different vocabulary or different expression so we tried to show you beat around the bush means to, to not go straight ahead and say something, right? So you don't want to say something because maybe it's difficult to say it. Like um, Trevor, maybe he works for my company. He's not doing a good job and I want to fire him. So maybe I'm hinting and saying, uh, why don't you think about trying another career? Or are you sure this is what you really want to do with your life? Instead of being direct, I am beating around the bush. Does that make sense? Does that sound about right, Trev? Yeah, I mean, you beat, beating around the bush, it can be to try and spare somebody from bad feelings mm -hmm. um, or just to, to be completely direct. So you know what? Unfortunately, it's giving them a clue that they should expect bad news. Yeah. Ian, I'm not going to beat around the bush. I don't like you anymore. Okay. We've grown Sorry, apart. I never there. see you. Right. But uh, us as humans, when we, when we speak, depending on the culture, some cultures are more direct. Mm -hmm. But here we find that being very uh, direct and assertive, we don't want to hurt people's feelings. Yeah. So we're, we don't, we don't take that direct approach uh, quite, uh, quite as, quite as much. Exactly. We're a very indirect communicating people, I think. And We're try to worry not about hurting conflict. people's feelings. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So here's one to bite the bullet. Um, so bite, yeah, bite the bullet. Um, I'll give an example. So uh, Trev, you know, you're you're starting to gain weight. Yeah, you're not looking so good these days. Uh, why don't you just bite the bullet and go talk to a doctor? 
Well, you know what? I was afraid that you might say that. And I think I finally uh, probably should just go over and at least, you know, talk with the doctor and, and make that, make that final decision to go. Yeah. So I don't want to, but I should just bite the bullet and accept it and go do something about it so I can change it to make it better. Exactly. Good. So bite the bullet actually means to do something you don't really want to do. So something that's difficult that you've been maybe putting off for a while, just bite the bullet and do that, that thing. I bit the bullet last night, Ian, and I, there was a Nintendo game that the countdown was on for the oh, yeah. sales to be over at midnight. Yeah. And right before I went to bed, I almost forgot, but I finally bit the bullet and at about quarter to midnight, yeah. I bought the game. Okay. So but we'll that see. was something you wanted to do, right? I so did, but I was putting it on. You didn't want to do. Well, but I felt guilty. In that case. I felt guilty because I didn't want to spend the money if I if it wasn't worth it, right? But what game anyway. was it, by the way? It was. You're gonna laugh. I'm not a huge wrestling fan anymore, but it's WWE 2K Battlegrounds. Okay. Me and my little fellow like to play. Like he's right around that age, so we can do the wrestling moves and crazy yes. over the top. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So this isn't really an animal one, but I thought this was a cute picture to think outside the box. Uh, Trev, do you want to take this one on? Um, what you suggested is good, Ian, but I think we should really think outside the box on this one to try and think of different ways to attack the problem. We've looked at it from this angle. Maybe if we think a little bit more creatively and come up with a different proposition uh, to, or different, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Solution? Different approach to, to take, you know, to get the final solution. Maybe that would be best. Yeah, great. So I think Trevor explained it very well. Think outside the box means to think differently or more creatively to come up with a better solution to a problem. And I was just going to say, if you're doing like planning, whether it's planning in a lesson as far as, as uh, doing a group presentation or whether it's at work in a group meeting, you hear that a lot. One of the group leaders or the directors, supervisors will sit down and say, you know, well, let's think outside the box, everybody. Let's all explore different options of, you know, give us your suggestions on, on what you what you'd like to see and how best to proceed. Yeah, exactly. OK, great. A pain in the neck, or there's another expression, but we're not going to use it because we don't want to get censored on YouTube. But if somebody is a pain in the neck, so maybe I'll take this one. Um, okay. Trevor, you're, you're getting on my nerves. That's another expression. Okay, uh, Trevor, you're, you're talking too much. You're complaining too much. Really, you're starting to be a pain in the neck. I'm sorry about that. I'll try and behave a little bit more appropriately. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Trev, what does it mean to be a pain in the neck? Being bothersome, troublesome, right? Mm -hmm. Doing extra work or overtime work can be a pain in the neck. Um, doing, the do doing chores that you don't want to do, cleaning the dishes, now they're pain in the neck. Somebody giving you a hard time complaining, rah, 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 stop being a pain in the neck. Yeah. Different kinds of pains in the neck. Great. Yeah, so it can be a thing you have to do, can be a person, can be a kid, uh, can be an animal. Um, so lots of things can be a pain in the neck. So basically just a person or a thing that's bothering us that we don't maybe want to talk to, a person we don't want to talk to or a thing we don't want to do. Okay. A slap in the face. So slap in the face. Uh, Trev, do you want to try and use this one in a sentence for us? When Well, I'm just thinking about what you were saying earlier on. I thought what a slap in the face was mentioning that I gained some weight. You know, I work really hard. That's why I buy these games, to get these thumbs moving. Get oh, yeah. That's your exercise, right? And that was a real slap in the face. I, I didn't really take kindly to what you said. I took offense to it, right? Mm -hmm. And it's really? funny because that expression, slap in the face, physically to slap somebody, it hurts. 
Mm -hmm. But also when you use words that hurt people as well, that's also a slap in the face. And that's kind of what we're going for here. It's not literally physically striking or hitting somebody. Mm -hmm. It's telling something in such a way that it makes the person feel bad right. or doubts themselves a little bit, right? Yeah, exactly. So words can be a slap in the face. So you say something that really hurts the person. Uh, Sadia has a comment. Reality check. So sometimes yeah. maybe a slap in the face is necessary. Uh, we need to slap somebody in the face with words to give them a reality check. But it can still hurt, right? So uh, the expression slap in the face means to, you know, wake somebody up with your words, maybe give them a reality check, say something that they didn't really want to hear. Awesome. Thanks, Sadia. Cool. Uh, how are we doing? We're running we got a couple to, couple to go there. Yeah. Yeah. Thank still you. have a few more. So, and this is a body idiom. There are a lot of idioms about the body. So, with the eyes, the ears, the nose. Uh, this one is to see eye to eye with somebody. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so I'll take this one maybe. Um, so, Trev, we. Uh, we had a little argument last night, so we didn't agree on how we should do this lesson today. So we did not see eye to eye. No, we didn't, unfortunately, which is one of the few times that that was the case. Mm -hmm. So what do we think it means? What does to see eye to eye mean? Trev, you want to take this one? Agree. In agreement with something. Yep. Yep. So we agree. We're kind of like on the same page. Did we do that one already? We did do on the same page, but that's exactly what we want to use for that one. Seeing eye to eye and being on the same page. So really similar we meaning on the same page and see eye to eye with somebody. Very common idioms and they both sort of mean the same thing. And it makes it's easy to understand because you're looking and you're making that connection. Are we together? Are we connected on this one? Or are we disconnected, right? Exactly. Uh, so next one, another body idiom is to play it by ear. Can I let you know an interesting one, a uh, little anecdote for me on this one? Sure. I've, I'm a native English speaker born and raised here in Nova Scotia. And I didn't always know if it was play it by ear or play it by air. Oh, play because by I have different parts of my family from different parts of Nova Scotia, yeah. and the pronunciation's a little bit different. So I would always hear, "Well, let's play it by air, air," and I'm like, "Are they saying play it by?" Air? So I never really was sure. So okay. it is play it by ear, it not is play air. it by ear. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to try and use that one in a sentence for us? Why? Well, yeah, I think we're doing a good job of showing exactly how to play it by ear. Mm -hmm. um, we're kind of, we have a little bit of a plan, but we're basically just going with the flow, seeing where this conversation takes us. And, you know, should somebody have a question, maybe we'll go that way. And, you know, we just, we're kind of flexible. Yeah, exactly. So you have kind of maybe have a general plan but you didn't plan out the whole thing. Uh -huh. So we'll just play it by ear, see how it goes, maybe about the time that we meet, what we do, how the, the thing will unfold. And the weather plays a big part in Nova Scotia with people making plans. And usually this is a making plans type of expression that we hear. Mm -hmm. What would you guys like to do today? Well, we are in Halifax. I'd love to go, you know, an hour east to go to the beach, but let's play it by ear. I mean, aren't we not supposed to get rain? Yeah, by air, air. Sorry. sorry? You said play it by air. Oh, did I again? Oh, my God. <laughs> play it by ear. It's, maybe it's my accent. Hair, <laughs> hair. Can you hear me? Hear me? <laughs> it's ingrained now. That's right. Yeah. Okay. To slip one's mind. Um, so, uh, Trevor, I, I wanted to call you a few days ago to go to the movies with me, but it totally slipped my mind. Sorry about that. No problem. I'll forgive you. I'll give you a pass on this one. Yeah. 
Okay, so slip one's mind, slip my mind, slip your mind means that you forgot something, right? And if you can make maybe even a mental image in your head where your brain is whoop, doing a little slip, right? Because that's yep. kind of the idea, right? Yeah, if I was an artist, I would do that. But you would, I'm... right out the ear. Okay. Is it time to call it a day yet, Trevor? We're getting pretty close for me anyway. It's almost time to call it a lunch. But yeah, my time I think is almost done done here for today. So yeah. it's pretty pretty close to calling it a day time, I think. Exactly. So call it a day means we're going to finish, maybe go home for the day from work, go do something else. Um, so our work is done, we call it a day. I think we got two more, two or three more, and then we'll call it a day. So this is a money idiom. Uh, I couldn't find a Canadian dime, so I used a U.S. dime. So, Trevor, do you want to try and use a dime a dozen in a sentence? Mm. Oh, you're looking to go uh, for a swim in a lake in Nova Scotia. Well, let me tell you something. They're a dime a dozen. So wherever you decide to go, I'm sure you'll be satisfied. Many different ones to find around here. Great, so dime a dozen means there are lots, right? We have so many lakes in Nova Scotia, maybe thousands of lakes. So lakes are a dime a dozen in Canada. Uh, donuts are a dime a dozen. We have lots of donuts. What else? Um, trees, trees are a dime a dozen in Canada. So it just means something is so common that the price theoretically would be very low. But you can't actually buy, you know, a dozen lakes for a dime. So Not it's just, anymore. again, it's an expression. It's an idiom. That was it. So those were our 20 idioms. So hopefully you learned a lot. Uh, you can go back and rewatch this video. It will be on YouTube. It'll be on Facebook. Go back and practice. Um, so we learned what idioms are, why they're important to learn, how can you learn them best, and we learned those 20 idioms for life in Canada. I want to thank some people. So Trev, I want to thank you for taking your morning, uh, volunteering it to teach English to, to all of our friends out there uh, in, the, in the universe who are watching this. Uh, thank you for watching as well. So thank you for paying attention. Thank you for commenting, everybody. Thank you for liking and loving this video. If you want to follow up, so on my website, www.rightstartcanada.ca, I'm going to put some activities on there. So they're not up there just yet, but if you come back maybe this time tomorrow, you will be able to do a quiz, a quiz and practice um, finding the meaning of these idioms. So this is a good way to practice. Make sure that you learn those idioms and you're able to remember them for the long term. Uh, if you have a question or something, you can email me or you can message me on Facebook. So my email is info at rightstartcanada.ca. So Trev, is there anything that you want to impart to our viewers before we call it a day? Well, uh, thank you very much for having me on to your presentation. It was my pleasure. I hope to see some uh, some faces next time, the next time that I show up around. Mm -hmm. And if you ever see me out and around town, don't be shy. Don't be Introduce shy. yourself to me for sure. And to everybody else, to leave with an idiom, it's been a slice. So yeah. thanks very much for having me today. All the best and uh, take good care. Thanks, Mr. Shepard. I appreciate it. Thank you, Trevor. It was a lot of fun. Bye, everybody. See you later.